Oh, the hymn's done. <laughs> Good morning. Things keep moving on whether you're doing anything or not. Good morning. Glad to see you on this Monday morning. It is kind of gray and ucky out here in Wisconsin. Um, yeah, it's still springtime, you know, and you got that that April shower thing is just starting now. We've got, um, sorry, I had to adjust my chair. We got that, uh, uh, we got rain coming tomorrow and Wednesday, I think. So I don't want to spend a lot of time uh, this morning horsing around. I'm, I'm trying to keep us in the readings and, and on the schedule because um, we caught up last week. And I don't want to, normally I vacate the um, the Sunday reading. We don't do it and I just go to the to the next one. But we're in the midst of the plagues here. And so I want to read Sunday and Monday, which is, uh, which makes it a little longer. It's the plagues. It's the plagues. But chances are, <clears throat> unless you have a, a good practice of, of reading the scriptures uh, line by line, word by word, through and through all the time, you probably haven't heard all the plagues. Uh, in a while, so I would like to. I'd like to do that. So we're going to have a little longer reading today, and I'll try to keep my um, my my homily get well, my speaking as the text speaks um, my homily a little shorter. So let's um let's see who's here with us this morning on this Monday. Uh, we've got Brenda. Good morning. Sixty-two in Kalamazoo. Holy moly! We're supposed to get to 47 today, <clears throat> according to, to the weather, <clears throat> which is okay with me. Jill and John, good morning. Kathy, good morning, dear. Uh, Dirk, good morning. Glad you're here. Say hi to Sue for me if you get a chance. Well, you'll get a chance. Say hi to it for me. Ashley, good morning. Uh, yeah, welcome to Holy Week. That's right. This is this is the this is Monday of Holy. This is Holy Monday. Monday of Holy Week. Um, Geraldine and Neil, good morning. Glad you guys are are here with us. And Michael, good morning. 84 in Florida, 68 in Marlette. Uh, 80s every morning day in Florida. Might be time to head back to Marlette there uh, before it gets utterly miserable. Uh, Michael, and say hi to Karen for me. Yeah, or if, Karen, if you're there, hello. Uh, Connie, good morning to you and Robin up there in Windy Harshaw. Renee, good morning. Oh, thunderstorms over there. Oh, yeah, well, it, you know, it is springtime. That cleans out all the winter guck, right? Wash it, washes the dog poop under the soil. <clears throat> Not saying nothing about having dogs. John and Janet, good morning to you guys. A blessed Holy Week to you as well. Debbie, Ann, and Grant, good morning to you guys. We'll, uh, that's everybody that's piped in so far. Hello to those who who haven't piped in or said anything or who are watching us later in the day at another time. Glad you're here with us. Monday's my day off, so I'm wearing my casual clothes today. Although there may be a lot of casual clothes this week as I sit here and try to grind through uh, four sermons for this week. Actually, I've got Monday, Thursday done. I th Well, it needs a little bit of touch-up, and then I can go on to, to Good Friday and then and then two sermons for... Uh, Easter Sunday, a sunrise one and a Easter day one. Somebody said, "Well, Pastor, you can, you can just, you can just preach the same sermon at, at sunrise and at, at Easter day." Well, sometimes people come to both services, and yeah, they could hear it again, and it wouldn't hurt them; they'd get more out of it. But the readings are different. The reading for sunrise and the reading for Easter day are different readings, and so the sermons don't necessarily mesh together. Um, the hymns do. Sometimes I can skip and use the same hymns or use similar hymns, but I, I don't feel right reusing sermons all the time. I just, um, I don't know. If, if two, ser two services on the same day, that's a different thing. Like on Sunday, I have a service here and right now here in Irma at 8.30 and up in Harsha at 10.30, and, and that's the same sermon because it's the same readings, the same Sunday and everything. But anyway, <clears throat> enough of that of that silliness we'll go ahead and uh and get started here if you have a a hymnal a lutheran service book page 295 you have daily prayer for individuals and families and that's where we begin each day all right in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen in the morning O lord you hear my voice 
In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Now, if you have the Treasury of Daily Prayer, we're starting actually on Palm Sunday. So I'm using the psalm from Palm Sunday, and the first reading is from Palm Sunday, and then I'm going to skip uh, into Monday, and we're going to read the Monday reading. We'll, we'll probably use the uh, Monday prayer to close out the, <clears throat> the devotional part. So our psalm today, Psalm 71, verses 19 through 24. Your righteousness, O God, reaches the high heavens. You have done great things, O God, who is like you. You have made me see many troubles and calamities will revive me again. Wait, you, you who have made me see many troubles and calamities will revive me again. From the depths of the earth, you will bring me up again. <clears throat> you will increase my greatness and comfort me again. I will also praise you with the harp for your faithfulness, O my God. I will sing praises to you with the lyre, O Holy One of Israel. My lips will shout for joy when I sing praises to you, my soul also, which you have redeemed. And my tongue will talk of your righteousness, your righteous help all the day long. For they have been put to shame and disappointed who sought to do me hurt. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> this is, um, I believe this is still King David writing the Psalms. Um, but it also is speaking of resurrection, right? You have made, who have made me see many troubles and calamities will revive me again, right? Passing through death, Christ brings us back to life. Uh, you will increase my greatness and comfort me again. And I will praise you with a harp for your faithfulness, oh my God. I suppose some of the Psalms are where we get the imagery of, of, uh, of angels in heaven playing the harp and praising, although there's other places where it's in the text. Um, Remember, <clears throat> heaven, heaven is, if we, if we include the, the resurrection in the idea of heaven, then we've got the right idea. But if we, if we stop at, um, if we stop at our eternal life lived in Christ in, in uh, disembodied forms, we, we miss the resurrection and the resurrection is, is where we're headed, right? Um, we were made to be creatures of body and spirit. Uh, not to be creatures of only spirit, or as some live their lives uh, today, even in the world, creatures only of the body, seeking only the pleasures of this life. And so we were meant to be creatures of spirit and body, living in, in unity within ourselves in, and in unity with Christ. And that's what we've been given <clears throat> in, in the promise, promises of the word and faith. Speaking of living only in this world, I don't know what I got going on here. I have a tickle. A little drainage, I think. Um, we're going to read from Exodus chapter 8 and 9 today. Um, like I said, it's a little longer, but um, we're in the plagues. We had the first plague yesterday, or Friday, uh, Saturday, Saturday, uh, which was the rivers turning, you know, all the water in, in, in uh, Egypt turning to blood. Okay. And today we pick up with a second plague, and we're going to go through several plagues here. So, <clears throat> so the second plague, Exodus 8, chapter 1. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go into Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. But if you refuse to let them go, behold, I will plague all your country with frogs. The Nile shall swarm with frogs that shall come up into your house and into your bedroom and on your bed and into the houses of your servants and your people, and into your ovens and your kneading bowls. The frogs shall come up on you and on your people and on all your servants. And the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch out your hand with your staff over the rivers, over the canals, and over the pools, and make frogs come up on the land of Egypt. <clears throat> so Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, 
and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. But the magicians did the same by their secret arts and made frogs come up on the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron and said, Plead with the Lord to take away the frogs from me and my from my people, and I will let you go to sacrifice to the Lord. Moses said to Pharaoh, Be pleased to command me when I am to plead for you and for your servants and for your people, that the frogs be cut off from you and your house, cut off from you and your house, and be left only in the Nile. And he said, Tomorrow. Moses said, Be be it as you say, so that you may know that there is no one like the Lord our God. The frogs shall go away from you and your houses and your servants and your people. They shall be left only in the Nile. So Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh, and Moses cried to the Lord about the frogs as he had agreed with Pharaoh. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses. The frogs died out in the houses, the courtyards, and the fields. And they gathered them together in heaps, and the land stank. But when Pharaoh saw that there was a respite, he hardened his heart and would not listen to them, as the Lord had said. Then the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch out your, your staff and strike the dust of the earth, so that it may become gnats in all the land of Egypt. And they did so. Aaron stretched out his hand with his staff and struck the dust of the earth, and there were gnats on man and on beast. All the dust of the earth became gnats in the land of Egypt. The magicians tried their secret arts to produce gnats, but they could not. So there were gnats on man and beast. Then the magicians said to Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he would not listen to them as the Lord had said. <clears throat> then the Lord said to Moses, Rise up early in the morning and present yourself to Pharaoh as he goes out to the water, and say to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Or else, if you will not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies on you and your servants and your people and into your houses, when the houses of the Egyptians shall be filled with swarms of flies and also the ground on which they stand. But on that day I will set apart the land of Goshen, where my people dwell, so that no swarms of flies shall be there. You may know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. Thus I will put a division between my people and your people. Tomorrow this shine, sign shall happen. And the Lord did so. There came great swarms of flies into the house of Pharaoh, and into his servant's house, throughout all the land of Egypt, the land was ruined by swarms of flies. <clears throat> then, Mero, then, then, Mero, then Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron and said, Go sacrifice to your God within the land. But Moses said, It would not be right to do so, for the offerings we shall sacrifice to the Lord our God are, in, are an abomination to the Egyptians. If we sacrifice offerings abominable to the Egyptians before their eyes, will they not stone us? We must go three days' journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God, as he tells us. So Pharaoh said, I will let you go out to sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness, only you must not go very far away. Plead for me. Then Moses said, Behold, I am going out from you, and I will plead with the Lord that the swarms of flies may depart from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people tomorrow. <clears throat> Only let not <clears throat> Pharaoh cheat again by not letting the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. So Moses went out from Pharaoh and prayed to the Lord, and the Lord did as Moses asked, and removed the swarms of flies from Pharaoh from his servants, from his people. Not one remained. But Pharaoh hardened his heart this time also, and he did not let the people go. Now we flip to Monday. So the, 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 the second plague, the third plague, and the fourth plague, uh, frogs, gnats, and flies. Uh, and then we, we pick up here with the fifth plague, <clears throat> reading in Exodus chapter 9. 
Then the Lord said to Moses, Go into Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. For if you refuse to let them go and still hold them, behold, the hand of the Lord will fall with a very severe plague upon your livestock that are in the field, the horses, the donkeys, the camels, the herds, and the flocks. But the Lord will make a distinction between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of Egypt, so that nothing that belongs to the people of Israel shall die. And the Lord set a time, saying, Tomorrow the Lord will do this thing in the land. <clears throat> and the next day the Lord did this thing. All the livestock of the Egyptians died, but not one of the livestock of the people of Israel died. And Pharaoh sent, and behold, not one of the livestock of Israel was dead. But the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he did not let the people go. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Take a handful of soot from the kiln, and let Moses throw them in the air, in the sight of Pharaoh. It shall become fine dust over all the land of Egypt, and become boils breaking out in sores on man and beast throughout all the land of Egypt. So they took soot from the kiln and stood before Pharaoh. And Moses threw it in the air, and it became boils breaking out in sores on man and beast. And the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils, for the boils came upon the magicians and upon all the Egyptians. But the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, and he did not listen to them, as the Lord had spoken to Moses. Then the Lord said to Moses, Rise up early in the morning and present yourself before Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. For this time I will send all my plagues on you yourself and on your servants and your people, <clears throat> so that they may know that there is none like me in all the earth. For by now I could have put out my hand and struck you and your people with pestilence, and you would have been cut off from the earth. But for this purpose I have raised you up to show you my power, so that my name may be proclaimed in all the earth. You are still exalting yourself against my people and will not let them go. Behold, about this time tomorrow, <clears throat> I will cause very heavy hail to fall, such as never been in Egypt from the day it was founded until now. Now, therefore, send, out, send get your livestock stock and all that you have in the field into safe shelter. For every man and beast that is in the field and is not brought home will die when the hail falls on them. Then whoever feared the word of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh hurried his slaves and his livestock into the houses. But whoever did not pay attention to the word of the Lord left his slaves and his livestock in the field. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward heaven, so that there may be hail in the land of Egypt, on man and beast, and every plant in the, of the field in the land of Egypt. And then Moses stretched out his staff toward heaven. And the Lord sent thunder and hail and fire and rain, and fire rain down, ran up. Thunder and hail and fire ran down to the earth. And the Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. And there was hail and fire flashing continuously in the midst of the hail. A very heavy hail such as never had been in all the land of Egypt since it had become a nation. The hail struck down everything that it was in the field in all the land of Egypt, man and beast. And the hail struck down every plant of the field and broke every tree of the field. Only, the land, only in the land of Goshen, where the people of Israel were, was there no hail. Then Pharaoh sent and called Moses and Aaron and said to them, This time I have sinned. The Lord is in the right, and I and my people are in the wrong. Plead with the Lord, for there has been enough of God's thunder and hail. I will let you go, and you shall stay no longer. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, so we've come through the seventh plague. As you likely know, there are ten. Why does God send these plagues upon the people? Well, you know, the question of suffering in the world has always been, um, has always been there, 
right? Why, why does God allow suffering in the world? He doesn't cause it. He's not the author of evil. He's not the author of suffering, but he does allow it. Why does he allow it? Well, look at the Egyptians and look at Pharaoh, right? The Egyptians are worshiping false gods. Uh, they are turned away from God. They are God's people. They are God's creation. God creates everything that's in the world. Everything that is made, he made, and nothing is made without him. Um, and yet they're turned away from him, hating, hating him, it's fair to say, despising him, um, and really not even fearing him. God's giving them a reason to fear him. Uh, he's allowing these things to come upon them. Um, perhaps in this case, even causing them, because he wants, as he himself has said, he wants his power and authority in the world to be known. Right here. So even today, that power and authority remains, right? Just because, just because literally thousands of years have passed from the time of Moses to where we are today, doesn't mean that God's power has diminished, right? doesn't mean that his power is any less. doesn't mean that his authority has changed. He is, was, and always will be. Alpha and Omega, beginning and end. Really, the source of evil in the world is man. It's us. It's the things we do. The things we do that cause suffering amongst our brothers and sisters, both in and out of Christ. <laughs> We have two great commands. Love the Lord your God with all your strength and all your mind and all your heart and all your body and all your soul, etc., etc., and your neighbor is yourself. And we fail to do both of them, right? If we could do them, Christ would not have had to go to the cross. If we could do them for ourselves, if our works would save us from sin, death, and hell, then Christ's death would be unnecessary. However, However, we can't. And in order to fulfill the law that he gave us, God sent his only begotten son to die for us. In this week of Holy Week, I should almost cover my cross, but in this week of Holy Week, we remember what God has done for us. For right now, on Holy Monday, Christ is in the temple courts preaching and teaching telling people about God and what is the kingdom of heaven and who is God and what is he doing and why should we worship him, right? He's giving the rationalized arguments to people. He's showing, continuing to show his authority by healing and casting out demons. But he's waiting for the day, the day that comes, the day when he will be arrested by the chief priests, well, he will be prosecuted. Well, he will be judged, found guilty of a sin he did not commit through false words spoken by those seeking to condemn him, to do evil to him because they are fallen. And yet he will still take all that punishment and he will go to the cross, bloody and suffering, and there be nailed to it be crucified and die for you, for you. Before you were even conceived in your mother's womb, he gave his life for you. Uh, perhaps a good man can die for one other person, but Christ, because he is the very son of God, can die for all people. So he gave his life upon the cross that your suffering in this world would come to an end. It's only temporal. It's for a time. When that time ends, you leave this world and you are with him. Disembodied, a spirit without a body, to await the day of the resurrection, when your spirit will be rejoined with the perfect and glorified body of, that, that you were intended to have from the beginning of creation. There you will be with him to worship and give him praise and give him thanks for all that he has accomplished for you in this life bringing you to the next. He doesn't have to send 10 plagues for you to know that. He did it here in the scriptures so you would know it. And he gives, he allows enough trouble and suffering in your lives for you to know that there is only one 
real escape from all of this. One way out of this veil of tears, and that is in Christ, who died for you and on the third day was raised, demonstrating, proving, giving evidence that he is the Son of God, and the words that he speak is true. Amen. Let's look to our prayer of the day. As I said, I was going to pick up on Monday's prayer of the day here. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that in the midst of our failures and weaknesses, we may be restored through the passion and intercession of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> and we continue with the prayer that our Lord taught us, or no, uh, with the Apostles' Creed. Our fa uh, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we pray that prayer which he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And for this Monday in Holy Week, precious Savior, Lamb of God for sinners slain, graciously forgive me all my sins and embrace me with your tender love. I have failed to fear, love, and trust in you above all things. This I confess, O Lord. The love of life, the allurements of the present world, the glamour of success, and the favor of friends have enticed me away from you. These things would take, my, take possession of my heart. O oh Lord, let me not sell my soul for the passing treasures of this present world. If I have kissed you with the kiss of betrayal, kiss me, Lord, with the kiss of forgiveness, and embrace me again as your own. Have mercy upon me. Protect me from the cunning of Satan, the allurement of this world, the wickedness of my own heart. You are my surest friend. Hold me that I do not stumble and fall. Guard my heart. Guard my heart that the love of gold, the smiles of popularity, and the eagerness to succeed may not rob me of my salvation, which you so dearly bought with your own blood. Above all, gracious Savior, let me not despair of your mercy, but believe at all times that your love is as boundless as the heavens and deeper than the sea. O oh, friend of sinners, let me not fall away from you. Keep me standing in your grace until I stand in your presence forevermore to love you with a perfect love throughout all eternity. Amen. For those who continue to suffer in this world, both in body, mind, and soul, in the world around them and in other things, for those who are hungering as food becomes a, an issue of shortage, and for those who are unemployed as financial concerns begin to rise in our nation. And for those who suffer of ill health, especially those who have asked for our prayers, Ashley, Peter, Karen, Olive, James, Pat, Lois, Don, Rianne, and all who call upon your most holy name, grant them, Lord, both the forgiveness of their sins and the assurance and comfort of faith in you. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, thanks for bearing with me for an extended reading as I stumbled a little bit through it today between the stuff in my throat and the, <laughs> the extended reading. But I pray God's peace be upon you in this Holy Week. Uh, look to the suffering world around you and then give thanks to Christ that he alleviates suffering in the end and that, that uh, his promises are truth. God's peace be with you. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning, Tuesday morning, for our daily devotions together. God's peace.